Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're finally gonna be diving into how I use the Line 6 HX Stomps dual delays. Before we continue, please do all of the things to help this channel grow. Like this video, subscribe and comment below, and be sure to hit the bell icon when you do so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Without further ado, Let's get started. All right, everyone, so this one is a long time coming. Uh, this is a, a video that I've been personally looking forward to. If you haven't seen my initial video where I discuss the reverb settings that I use, I'm gonna link it right up here so that you can uh, watch that either before or after this video. I think it's important that we try to tackle one setting at a time, meaning one effect at a time versus trying to squeeze all of my settings into one video. So in this particular video, we're gonna be focusing on the dual delays only. If you wanna know more about my reverb settings, I do use the Glitz Reverb on Line 6 HX Stomp, which is worth checking out in that video. Before I continue, I do wanna let you guys know that I will be working on a video where I'm gonna be talking about the amps, IRs, and 10 band EQ that I use before I go into the delays and reverb but for today's purposes, we're only gonna be talking about the delays. Now, just like in my last video where I talked about the Glitz Reverb on the Line 6 HX Stomp, I don't want you to think that because you don't have an HX Stomp, you shouldn't watch this video. I think this is good information regardless of what delays you are using, especially if you have a dual delay setting on your unit or maybe you're using two delays. This is good information on how to sort of EQ and approach both delay settings to create an ambient wash underneath your guitar tone without getting in the way. Let me give you a brief little introduction as to why I even started using dual delays. It all started with my love and obsession with having two delays on at the same time, literally dual delays. And for years, I was using my favorite combination of delays. I was using a digital delay and a tape echo delay. And the pedals that I preferred in that category were the Boss DD5, and the Strymon El Capistan. Though the DD5 is pretty flexible and it takes tap tempo in, anyone who has messed with the El Capistan before knows that it does not do that. And so getting tap information to it was quite the challenge. I ended up modifying the Strymon El Capistan to receive tap tempo in. And then once I started using the Boss ES5, I wanted to utilize the MIDI function, so I ended up purchasing the Sela Quartz, which allowed me to give tap tempo information from the Boss ES5 via MIDI. The Sela Quartz is a very intelligent pedal which can give out tap information in various forms and that's how I was able to get it to the Boss DD5 and El Capistan. Again, the El Capistan was modified. It's not a pedal that can normally receive tap tempo in information. So that was an expensive and time consuming and I took a lot of brain power and a lot of effort to make that happen. And even then, it was a little bit glitchy to be perfectly honest with you. I still own all of my Boss DD5s but the El Capistan, the modified one, I ended up selling it because for me, it just didn't work like the way I wanted it to. There was always a little slight delay between when it received the tap tempo information and when it actually would kick in and work. And then there were times where it just would do whatever it wanted to do. Needless to say, when I finally discovered the dual delay setting here on the Line 6 HX Stomp, it saved me a lot of headaches and made me feel like I could truly depend on this thing on the fly, whether I'm in front of an audience playing live or in the studio trying to work really, really fast. Enough talking, let's dive in. That sound that you heard in the beginning of the video was a combination of my reverbs delays. I think I even had some drive on that. So that's my overall sound, but we're gonna break down just the delays today. Again, I'm using the Line 6 dual delays. So really quickly, let's hear what that sounds like out of the box, directly how it would sound when you first open up that delay setting. Keep in mind I've turned off the reverb, so this is just delay. I do have my amps on, obviously, my IR, my 10 band EQ, which is a part of my sort of bass tone. And then I do have compression on. That's always what I always have that on with my clean tones. Uh, but there are no other guitar pedals on to alter the tone or to add any more ambience or delays. So all you're hearing as far as actual effects are the delays coming from the Line 6 HX song. <laughs> So let's break down really quickly what I'm personally hearing. We have the left note sync and the right note sync. The left note sync is at a dotted eighth delay. The right note sync is at quarter note. Uh, the left feedback is at 30%. The right feedback is at 40%. The left mix is at 35. The right mix is at 50, right? Yep, 50%. <laughs> the level is uh, at 0.0, .0, which means it's exactly even. The low cut is off. The high cut is off. And then they have a modulation mode, and that's the the one thing that's sticking out to me right now, that to be perfectly honest with you guys, it's really uh, 
irritating me, to say the least. I do not like that chorus thing that they got going on. Now, you might have heard me say this in my reverb video as well. I'm not a huge fan of modulation uh, vibratos or uh, choruses, specifically in combination with my delays. There's something about it that sounds phase-esque to me. There's something about it that also gives me the impression like when I'm playing it, that I'm out of tune because essentially that's what modulation is, right? So this chorus here is not giving me an ambient thing. It's giving me its own effect. And, and that's the first thing that I wanted to change. And to be honest with you, it's the first thing that made me not want to use the dual delay setting, thinking that that was its vibe, that that's, I needed to use it in that way. But we'll get to that in a few seconds. The speed of the chorus is at 0 0.5. The depth of it is at 35%. Then the spread is all the way up to 10 then the trails are also off, uh, which means that if I were to turn the delays off, it would stop harshly and immediately. Now let's switch back over to my delay settings and how I've set the dual delays, and I'll discuss the changes along the way. So I personally left the left note and the right note exactly the same. It's how I would normally set up dual delays. It's what I did before when I was using my Boss DD5 and my El Capistan. Uh, so I use the left note at a dotted eighth, and my right note is a quarter note. But now let's talk about the feedback. The feedback is what I wanted to extend out a little bit. The left feedback is at 72% and the right feedback is at 72%. But here's the key to sort of not letting your delays dictate what you're playing or get too far in the way. And that's the mix. I have my left mix at 47% and my right mix at 39%. So though I've increased the feedback, I've kept the levels relatively low as to not get in the way. I've left the overall level exactly where it is. I've increased the low cut to 75, line six has their off, and I dropped the high cut to 2.5. A lot of people were mentioning about my reverb settings that they thought that I was going a little too crazy with the high cut, low cut thing. All I'm really doing with the high cut, low cut here is just taming that 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 high presence thing that these line six settings have brought to the table when you don't tame it it tends to be a little too aggressive and in the way and i want it to be a little warmer a nice warm bed of ambience versus being something that's really aggressive in your face so adjusting the high cut low cut for me was giving me an opportunity to almost eq the delays versus depending on my guitar to sort of dictate the EQing of those delays. So a nice little trick here if you have the ability to use it. And then the big thing that I did was I turned off modulation mode. Now I've said this before, I like modulation for the most part, but I just can't really play with it, especially when it's a chorus or a vibrato. Those are the only two options as far as I'm concerned that the dual delay settings give you. And I'm not really interested in putting either one of those in my delays, at least not a delay that I have as an always on delay like I do with the ones you're hearing right now. So therefore the depth and the spread don't matter. Uh, I have them at 100% here, but it doesn't matter because it's not on. And then the only other adjustment I made was the trails. Obviously, when I turned that delay off, I wanted to trail. So uh, I definitely would advise putting that on unless you are looking to stop delays harshly and abruptly. And I do that for certain songs as well. That's the reason why I've assigned one of my switches to be a mute switch so that I can harshly stop the effects if I really, really needed to. But for the most part, when I turn a delay off, I wanted to trail. I wanted to not stop so harshly, especially with the ambient stuff that I'm doing. So now let's hear all of these settings applied. So what you're hearing now is what I believe to be a much warmer usable version, especially when it comes to using it for an always on ambient style delay. To me, out of the box, that delay wasn't really my thing. It's not that it's unusable, it's just not my style. So this is a much more up my alley, J. Cruz style delay setting. Um, and it just so happens to still give me that dual delay type of vibe without actually having to have two separate delays on. But of course, what would this video be if I didn't discuss my snapshot settings? So let's discuss them. So for snapshot two, this is actually really easy. I do nothing different to the delays. The only changes I make are to my reverb settings. So the increase of ambience is all in the reverb. I do not touch my delays. They stay exactly the same. Let's go straight to snapshot three and I'll show you the changes that I made. Left note, right notes, I left them exactly the same at dotted eighth and quarter note. 
the left feedback and uh, the right feedback are exactly the same at 72%. But here's what we changed. We brought up the mix and we brought up the mix on both left and right and I made them even this time at 55%. Everything else is exactly the same actually. I left the high cut and the low cut exactly the same. Low cut is at 75, high cut is at 2.5 and then we've left map modulation off and still kept the trails on. So there's only really a slight difference in the level of the delay, not necessarily the sound. So here's what this sounds like. So as you can see, all of those differences are quite subtle. I do not alter the delays as much as I altered my reverb settings. So that's really where the ambience crept in. And here's the reason why I don't touch my delays too much when it comes to increasing the level of ambience. The more and more ambient my guitar sounds, the less I want to actually have delays bouncing, bouncing, and bouncing, and bouncing. Nine times out of 10, those repeats are going to start clashing with one another, running into each other, and ultimately will cause feedback, especially when I've increased the, the reverb so much, it'll start to just really kind of give you that woofy sound that nobody really wants with their ambience. They want nice clean ambience. In order to prevent that, you don't want to alter your delays too, too much, but I felt that it was necessary to increase the mix just a little bit, especially on Snapshot 3, which is my most ambient sound. So now I wanna quickly play you through all three snapshots, but this time I'm gonna add my reverb back in and I'm actually gonna put my JHS Morning Glory on for just a little bit of hair on there. Not that I don't like clean sound, but today I'm feeling a little risky and I wanna put some dirt on my guitar, so let's get it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far into the video, let me know by commenting below, we love delays. That's all I got for today's video. Please do me a favor, support the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit the bell icon so you can alert every single time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching and until next time. Guys, this is not a sponsorship, but I do want to give a quick shout out to my baby cousin. She started a company called Embroidery by Divine. She's amazing at it. She custom made this sweater for me. And if you can't see it, it's got this like really custom made, really detailed embroidery stitching. I'm going to put her Instagram handle in the description box below. Please visit her page, follow, like her photos, let her know that I sent you. Thanks again and until next time.